Then said he, Lo, I've come to do thy will, O God. He taketh always the first that he may establish the second, by the which we will we all sanctify through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Dear Heavenly Father, hope that Brother Jeremy, he will have strength to speak and will have ears to hear and hope that we would get a lot out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. I've been looking forward to this. I was about ready to explode when I came in here and everybody was standing around. I was like, let's, just, let's get this party started. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. This is God's will. Brethren, have you ever been rejected? I have. Maybe you haven't, but I have, and it hurts. It doesn't feel good at all. But you know what? I tell you what. I'd rather be rejected by people in this world than my God. And this is his will. That he doesn't reject you. That he doesn't reject me. This is good news to me, brethren. I don't know what it does to you, but it makes me, it makes me feel pretty good. Pretty good that my God doesn't want to reject me. When the world is going to, you know what, in a handbasket, everything is upside down. You're scratching your head daily wondering, that doesn't make any sense. Why are they doing, that doesn't make any sense either. Know this, that our God's not scratching his head. He knows exactly what he's doing. He has it in control. Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. By the which will we are sanctified. This is an important part right there, brother. We need to be sanctified. If we're going to be in the presence of God, we need to be sanctified. Just in case you thought you were going to do it on your own, the Lord has gone out of his way to show us that we couldn't do it on our own. Amen. He's taken godly men and women better than us, set them apart. He set them apart to be a special people to show us how far we could go on our own. How, how close can we get? He did this. He went to great lengths, brethren, to take a people to show us how close we can get. And it wasn't close enough. We, we couldn't do it. We couldn't, we couldn't, we weren't, it wasn't enough. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That's good news. Once and for all. I come to do thy will. So what is the point of the earth's existence? I know we have all kinds of different opinions on this. How long the earth's been here. Why the earth is here. How long it's going to be here when we're gone. We have all kinds of opinions on this. What is the point of man's existence? Why hasn't God destroyed both of them and started all over again? Because God has a reason for everything. There's nothing that God has done or is doing that doesn't have a point. He knows exactly what he's doing. We are still alive. We still exist to do God's will. That's what, our, that's what we're here for. It's for him. That's why, we, that's why we exist. It's to be used by him. To be sanctified to be set apart for his use. To be with our God. That's the, that's the end game. No matter what people think about this life and how good it is and how beautiful the trees are out there, this world is cursed. No matter how pretty you think you are, you're under a curse. If you haven't looked in the mirror lately, since I've been coming to this renewal, we've been getting older. 
I got gray hairs I didn't have when I first started. So what's the point? The end game is for us to be with our God. That's the purpose. Sin made us unclean. In Leviticus, we see God showing man that because of sin, he required sacrifice. There was animal sacrifice, meal offerings, burnt offerings, sin offerings. It's, he was showing, he was making a point here. Man needed to be clean. We, we weren't in a state that we could be in to be presentable, to be in his presence. It was all because of sin. See, the people needed to know this, though. They needed to know that you weren't acceptable. They needed to know that you weren't good or good enough. Being defiled by sin was bad, but not knowing that you're defiled by sin, that's even worse. Th walking around thinking that you're okay, that's worse. We got people, brethren, today walking around thinking they're okay. They're, they're fine. Well, we're not fine. We're, we're a people that are under, we're, we're born into sin. We need to be clean. We need to be sanctified. Man is not good. We cannot, we cannot and will never live, live up to be able to please our God. Not on our own. Not while being defiled by sin. We must be clean. Man had to be made clean. We had to be sanctified. All the animal offerings, meal offerings, burnt offerings, sin offerings were only to point man to what God was really wanting. He wanted, he wanted a sacrifice that was going to do the job. That was good enough to get the job done. Just bringing us up to the point of barely making it, that wasn't going to be good enough. It was never going to be good enough. God made a people, a people to carry out the best offerings that men could possibly offer. And it was clear that it was not enough to clean us from sin. It was not enough to take sin away. That's what needed to be done. Sin had to be taken away. Sin cannot be in God's presence. It can't. We could not be sanctified on our own. We are not on our own good enough. But brethren, the good, here's the gospel. Here's the good news. God is for us. He's working for us. He's not against us. Because of Jesus, and only because of Jesus, God is able to take away sin, transforming man in such a way that we could be in God's presence and stay in his presence. Who has known the mind of the Lord that he, hath, he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, 1 Corinthians 2.16. Brethren, without Christ, we, we can't be able to in the presence of God. Amen. Being sanctified doesn't mean it changes the way you act. Your mind is clean. Your whole being is clean. You start changing the way you act because you're a different person. Telling somebody the way to act, we just had a brother get up here and testify. You can put on a good show all day long, but it doesn't change you. People all around you can think that you look good. You sound good. You can even wear the right clothing, the clothing that they accept. You can say all the right words, the words that they accept. But are you accepted to God? Does God accept you? Who cares what if men accept you? You could be a part of the, the right, let's just call it a club, whatever you want to call it. 
But is God accepting you? This can only happen when we see that we are no good. Sin makes men proud, thinking that they are good enough, thinking that they can do what needs to be done. God has shown us that we need him, that we need a savior. There are no other religions, brethren, that have a savior. There are no other religions that have Jesus Christ Amen. to take away their sin. They could do all the doing that they can muster up, but they will never be good enough. In Christ Jesus, we are good enough. Amen. Jesus, who humbled himself, who humbled himself more than Christ Jesus? Could we humble ourselves? Like Christ humbled himself? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. He humbled himself and become, became obedient unto death. Philippians 5, 2, 5 through 8. Our desire, more than anything else, is to be pleasing to God. What else really matters, brethren, in this world if we don't please God? Does it, does it, is there anything that you can think of that matters more than pleasing God? As believers in Christ Jesus, this is what we want. And this is who we are. We are pleasing to our God. Does that sound good to you? I tell you what, it sounds good to me. Because I tried, like our brother stood up here and said, I tried to be pleasing to men. I tried to do everything I could, but there was something missing. Something wasn't right. I was trying to please the wrong people. Pleasing God, is that's all, that's all that matters. So Jesus came to do God's will. To be acceptable to God, this is our desire. And, but this is also God's desire. He came to do his will. When we understand that God's will is to make us pleasing to him, this brings great pleasure to his people. It brings great peace. It brings contentment and joy that puts us in a position that we want to be closer to him. See, without this, you can put on a good show all day long, but you know inside you don't want to be close to God. Not if you're not acceptable. Not if you're not clean. You don't want to be in the presence of God. That's the last thing you want to be in the presence of is God. Because Jesus, he makes us acceptable. Jesus says, I come to do thy will, O God. The will of God, we see, is to sanctify his people. To make us clean and acceptable. To make us so that he could use us. Nothing can sanctify God's people until the offering of the body of Jesus Christ was made. It was the body of Christ that sanctified us. Men can never do good enough. Jesus, he is the answer. He's what we were looking for. Peace with God is what we needed because of Christ. We have this peace with our God. Jesus had to leave glory. He had the glory that he had in heaven to do this. Brother, no other religion boasts this. A savior that sanctifies the people. See, the people have to do this themselves. But we have a savior that sanctifies the people. Jesus submitted himself to life by faith in complete dependence on the Father. He learned obedience. He suffered being tempted. He increased in wisdom and favor with God. Hebrews 5, 8, 2, 18, Luke 2, 5, and 2. Jesus was a perfect sacrifice. Many people, brethren, find it hard to believe that after all they've done, that they could be acceptable. 
But brethren, in Christ, you are acceptable. This is the truth. But that will, by that will, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Christ Jesus once and for all. This will is God's good pleasure with, with the sac sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The question is, do we believe it? That's the question. And this is the will that sanctifies the people of God. This is, this is God's will. We, ha we have to believe this. The point is Christ's offering brings God's people into a realm of blessing. You don't want to go anyplace else after you get blessed by God. See, once you start getting God's blessing, nothing else looks good to you. Before, before sin did look good. But that's because you weren't exposed to the blessings of God. Nothing matches up to God's blessings. Amen. Nothing comes close to what God has to offer. But you have to come to a point where you believe it and understand it and see it and know it. This is not a sanctif... We're not, we're not doing this on our own. There is a work to do, brethren. And once you come into this realm of blessing, you have no more desires than, other than to please your God. Those things that made you separate before, you don't want to have anything to do with it. You don't have to... See, the law told you, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. But see, now in Christ Jesus, we want to go further than the law took us. We don't want to stop at just murdering. Thou, thou shalt not kill. Well, well, we, well we're, we're on board with that. But we want to go further now. My text has the spotlight on what the Father is doing working through the Son. It's because of Jesus. We are set apart for God. To be blessed by God. Faith in the blood, Romans 3.25, qualifies us to come near and find mercy and grace in the time of need. In the time of need. Brother, yeah, we're going to struggle sometimes, but we don't have to stay in a struggle. We can come to our God, and he, he can give us what we need. When we're struggling and we feel like we're just not adequate, that's because we're not. And we can come to our God and he can give us grace to be strong, to be conquerors, to overcome. The world has nothing to offer us. It can't do this. You're weak. The world says, oh, we have a little program over here we can help you out with. Most likely it's going to leave you worse than when you were before. By the offering of the body of Christ, once and for all, we are sanctified people. When this sinks in, it will set you free. It will set you free. Set you free to no longer des desire sin. It will set you free to want, to want, not to be told anymore, to want to be holy. To want to be righteous. To want to be in God's presence and not leave anymore. You'll, you'll get to the point where you just don't want to leave anymore. See, what sin does for you, it brings you to the point where you don't want to be around God. You're running, but there's no place to hide. It's like the, you're asking the rocks to be, just, just come fall on top of me. But they can't help you. The law of God can now be written upon our hearts and put into our minds. We can know God and we can be close to him and we can be pleasing to him. We can find, we, we can find pleasure in the presence of our God like never before. This is what the prophets long for, brethren. And we see it today, we have it. We don't have to go anymore without our God. 
Not another day without our God. We're free to reject what the world has to offer us and accept everything that God has to offer us. Knowing this great and glorious truth makes all the difference to God's people. No longer do we have to wonder, is God, is he, is he happy with me? Is he pleased with me? We don't have to wonder that no more. He is pleased with us in Christ Jesus. As much as we see this, sin just loses its traction. The, what, the attraction it had for us before, it just is not there anymore. We don't, we don't even want it no more. We say, Lord, take this away from me. He is pleased. We can continue basking. I'm going to, this is a, I heard Brother Gibbon say this one time, it sounds so good. Basking in the Lord's glory. That's a good word. We're just going to bask in your glory. We don't have any desire for the world anymore, Lord. We see what you've done through your son, Jesus Christ, and we don't want it the world anymore. We know what we were before. We don't want that anymore. We can continue basking in the glory of God. It becomes all we want and all we need in Christ Jesus. Our desires match up with his desires. We want what God wants. The day of salvation is here. You think it's a mistake that you're here, brother? That the roads that you came down to get to this point where you're here today, that you took, you sacrificed to be here, to sit for three days talking about being sanctified? You think it's a, you think it's just, just by chance just happened? Brother, God got a hold of you. He cares for you so much that he sent his son to die for you. Spiritual nourishment is freely given, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. No more living at a distance from God. Being sanctified brings us confidence. Living at a distance from God robs God's people not knowing robs God's people. They have to know that God accepts them. The new covenant has been established. All who receive the Son are sanctified. We are. We do not have to be a part of a man-made religion pleasing men. We are the church of Christ, sanctified for God's use, for his good pleasure, brethren. Amen. Have you ever felt this rejection by men when you desired so much to please them? See, you're pleasing to God now. You can live your life holy, righteous, no more worrying about what men think. We are pleasing to our God, and we want to continue to please him. Amen. Do not worry what men think about you. What does God think? That's the question. That's the question we should be asking. Instead of worrying about offending everybody, what is God, is God offended by what I'm doing? Do we please God? If we live our lives with the mind of pleasing God in everything that we do, God, he will bless us. He'll bless our efforts in Christ Jesus and give us the power needed to succeed in every effort that we desire to be holy and acceptable, to live without sin. God can and will work in his people, both to will and to do of his good pleasure, Philippians 2, 13. This is his good pleasure, just in case you forgot. This is what he's doing. This is his good pleasure to have a people that are clean, have a people that are drawn to him, have a people that love what he loves, not a people that he has to 
hammer over the head and say, do this. Uh, people say, I want to do this. I want to be righteous. I want to be holy. I want to be like you. God can make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom the glory forever and ever, Hebrews 13, 21. God can do this. We are acceptable in Christ and only in him. We're not going to find acceptance any place else, brother. No place else in the world will you find acceptance. If we're going to be rejected, let us be rejected by men. But let us not be rejected by our God. There's no 40-day challenge that's going to help us. No quick fix is going to help us. We need a Savior. We are the people of God, now and for eternity. The foolish think they can live at a distance and still be accepted by God. But brethren, you can't live at a distance. And to be close, we must be sanctified. In Christ Jesus, we are. We are sanctified for God, to be used by God, to live close to God. No need to live at a distance anymore. We maintain this by faith. We do have a work to do. I won't downplay that. We st I don't know how long we're going to live. I don't know how long it's going to be before Jesus Christ comes. But I know we have a fight, a good fight, a good fight of faith. But it helps when you know you're accepted. It helps when you know God is on your side. We are never more accepted or perfect than when we are in Christ Jesus. It's our job to do everything we can to continue to see this. Brother, you're going to find, you're going to find yourself circumstances where this may not be so clear. But we want to make our, put ourselves in a position where we keep this clear. Where we see God is accept, that we're accepted by God, because if we can see this, this will strengthen us. This will give us the power we need to continue to run strong. We don't want to faint right before the end. There is a finish line to this. We don't want to get up to that finish line and faint right before the end. And we don't have to. We can run strong all the way to the end. The people we surround ourselves with make a difference. The things we listen to, the things we read make a difference. It helps to maintain what we have in Christ Jesus. Without Christ, we have nothing. With Christ, we have everything. Amen. Knowing we are sanctifying changes all areas of our life. So let us help one another not to lose sight of what Christ has done and what he is doing in us. Because of God working through his son, we are clean. We are set apart for the work of the Lord. We are sanctified for God's good pleasure. Brethren, let's not lose sight of that. Thank you, brethren.